beg you that we could watch the raccoon punch movies. <laughs> and? <laughs> and thank you that we could come over to play with the um, rubber arm. Thank you that we could um, play some games. Burp. Thank you that we could. Um, we could. We could. We could. Thank you that we could d d do marshmallows and chocolate. And thank you that. And thank you that we could go in your backyard. So, what's your favorite thing about Jerry? That he lets us play Legos every day. And what happened the last time you played Legos at Jerry's house? Um, we made a pirate ship. You made a pirate ship? And, we made a ship. and then what? And then we made dinosaurs. What's your favorite dinosaur? T-Rex. What dinosaur did Jerry make? T-Rex. Jack. What? What's your favorite thing about Jerry? I uh, let me build a dinosaur. What dinosaur did you build? What do you want to tell Jerry? Uh, that he's very awesome. And I love him. And I love him. And he's very awesome. Happy birthday, Jerry. Hi, Uncle Jerry. I wish you a happy birthday. Thank you for inviting us over for Legos and playing fun games with us. Oh, and thank you for letting us watch the Raccoon Touch movie with you. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Raccoon Touch movie! I really like all of Jerry's videos that he makes for people. Um... My favorite is the Gagey in the bat Bathtub video, and, um, uh, I also like the Space Kids ones, the Tanya B-Day, the Martin B-Day, the Peter B-Day, and the Welcome to the World Run. Um, and, and we're making a video for him right now. Yeah. Hey, Uncle Jerry. Um, happy birthday. I, I remember this one time where we were playing Mafia, and I never once suspected it was you. It was you because you were so nice. And you were like, oh, well, maybe it could be me, and things like that. But it really was you. I hope you have many more experiences where your slyness and tricksteriness comes in handy. Even though, unless you're a bank robber, I doubt it will. I love you. Goodbye. I love you. Hey, Jer. Happy birthday. I love all the times I get to go down to your house and hang out with you and Gage. Even if it's just watching videos or playing games, you always ask if I want to join. I love all the times where I get to go and watch movies and go to ice cream with you, and I'm always really grateful. Thank you for being uh, such a great uncle and friend, and uh, happy birthday. Happy birthday. I think you're a really fun person, and thank you for inviting us to movie and game nights every time we came to visit. When Jack and Kate were being born, uh, Jerry and his family let us kind of colonize their house for like an entire weekend. And throughout the years, he's let me go with him to B-Movie Bingo and the Eclipse and all these fun different activities to spend time with him. Um, and so I really appreciate all the things that he does for us. Happy birthday, Jerry.
Um, one time he took me out to the um, Japanese steakhouse after school because it was just after finals and I was really stressed out. And we had a little date night and the dude cooked it up, it up right in front of us and he made like a an onion volcano and it fired. It had fire, but I missed it, so he made the guy do it again, so I could get a video of it, and that was really fun. One time, um, we were watching um, H3H3 videos in the basement, me, Gage, and Dad, and he started laughing, um, inhaling the Diet Pepsi he was drinking, and then stood up and passed out on the ground, falling into a pile of bleach that he knocked over. Um, and so that was, I thought that he was going to die. And so I had Gage run upstairs. He got the phone. He was about to call 911. And then he woke, dad woke up and he was like, what's so funny? And then he laughed at us as we sobbed uncontrollably. I think that's a good representation of my father. But now he's like nine months sober from Diet Pepsi. So dad first took me to, um, movie bingo when I was in high school and it was really fun and then we kind of made it a thing to keep doing it on Tuesdays the first Tuesday of the month and the movies are never like good but it's funny and it's a great time to spend with dad and then we took Luke once but Luke got bingo his first time and dad and I are never gonna live it down because neither of us have got bingo yet and it's just a really fun memory and time to go to be movie bingo with dad and never win apparently when uh i was a kid um i got really embarrassed because jerry uh, a couple years earlier had posted a blog post um, talking about how when i was over at a sleepover at his house i peed my pants during the night um and sort of all of the shenanigans that he had to deal with during that escapade. Um, and, and so as a kid, I remember feeling really, really anxious, realizing that this article on uh, our little blogosphere had been written, that I, I gathered up all my courage and I went to Jerry and I, I was like, Jerry, is there any way you can just like take this blog post down? And I remember, you know, Jerry laughing um, and making fun of me, but he did take the post down, and, you know, he was nice and apologetic about it, um, but I think the best part was that 14 years later, then he published that into a book. Hey, Jerry, this is Jamie. Happy birthday. This project that Tanya and the kids put together reminds me just what an amazing person you are, and while I was thinking about it, started thinking about what a absolutely generous nature you have um, from when I was little you would let me you know come in and read your comic books and play with your Legos and you'd show me how the Legos worked and you'd build things with me and then when we got older you would share your um, your records with me I remember Prince's Purple Rain and you teaching me to like ACDC and I remember this one time when you came home from OSU, you had your first computer with you. And even though it was brand new to you, you uh, let me play with it for hours on end as I was learning how to type and do other things because I thought it was interesting. Um, <clears throat> you have a really uh, infectious curiosity. And what I mean by that is that you're interested in people around you and you're interested in society and culture and you're always making the people around you interested in those things too. Um, you're always introducing new things and trying new things and the people around you are so much more uh, richer in their lives for it. Uh, I used to um, always ask me like how college was going and whenever we would come to Portland you would always take us out to the newest places trying the new things whether it was to a new restaurant or to take us to Powell's for the very first time. And I always really appreciated that. You have a way of focusing on people that really makes them feel special. And you have a lot of attention that you give to the, that person. So when you're talking to somebody, 
they pretty much kind of feel like they're the only person in the room, which is totally awesome. Um, I was always really impressed when you would call up <clears throat> on the way to taking the kids to school and you'd be checking in on me and my family to find out how we were doing. And that was just so interesting to me that even though you were totally busy, you would still take the time to uh, call us. And uh, that's one of the things that I really appreciate about you is that every time we come to visit, you always take the time to uh, take my kids and do something with them individually, whether it's to <clears throat> play with Legos with them or show them movies, sometimes crazy movies. Um, they're always just amazed when they leave that, you know, they could have that experience. But I just wanted to wish you a happy 50th birthday, tell you that I love you very, very much. And I hope you have 50 more years because everybody around you is better for having you here with us. We love you. Happy birthday, Jerry. I've always appreciated how you've been a great uncle to our kids and involved them in games. I remember when uh, you came out to the, the beach house and played that cool cooperative game with the kids. And then uh, I remember you reading that one book to the kids and I really love that to pieces. Thank you very much, Jerry. Have a great birthday. Happy 50th birthday, Jerry. Um, one of my fondest memories of you is in high school and college. You would make me mixed tapes and you made me tapes of Nirvana and Pearl Jam and they might be giants before they hit MTV. So I was able to listen and enjoy music in the Grand when, uh, when it hadn't even gotten on the radio that much. Um, so I appreciate that and all your thoughtful gifts over the years. Uh, happy birthday. We love you and we hope you enjoy your day. <laughs> That story. Uh, oh, hi. Oh, we were just talking about Jerry. Oh, good time. So many good stories. So many good stories. Uh, my favorite one. Oh, Ren. We were rebels back in the day. There was a really bad president named George Bush. Worst president ever. And we, your dad, Jerry and I, went around and hung up signs saying bad things about him. And we had to hang them really high so people wouldn't like take them down. And over here by the Walgreens, there's this telephone pole and we wanted to hang the sign really high. So Jerry and daddy put me on their shoulders and I stood up on Jerry's shoulders or Peter's? Jerry's shoulders. I was standing on Jerry's shoulders. And we got the thing up there and I stapled it up there and stapled it up there. And I'm like, okay, I'm good, I'm good. I got it up there. And he just stepped out from under me and I hit the pavement <laughs> and I was wearing a jean jacket at the time and I had some change in my pocket. And I hit the pavement with my head. And change came flying out like I was a pinata. <laughs> oh, concussions are so fun. <laughs> and then we drove around town all night, like putting signs up everywhere saying, oh, he's a bad president or stuff like that. It was good, that was fun. So whenever I look back at my time with Jerry as a child, there are way too many things to think of. Uh, one of my favorite things is uh, when we were somewhere in our late single digits, early teens, both of us became paper boys. And we spent a lot of time driving around, riding around on our bikes or walking through neighborhoods, giving newspapers to old people who would never pay us money. And if they didn't pay, then we would have to pay. And that's oh, well. a different story on its own. Anyway. What we do with that money is a key thing, which is not only would we go spend it buying giant sodas that were suicides or graveyards or whatever they're called, where you mix in every flavor imaginable, which nowadays makes me just want to throw up. <laughs> uh, and then one of the other big things we do is we use that money to further our education by buying comic books, lots and lots of comic books. And it's really weird now that they're starting to bring some of these comic books to the big screen and more and more people in this world will know the name of like Moon Knight and Rom and things like that that are coming to a theater near you. 
So one very memorable thing is when Jerry and I were like six and eight or something like that and our dad took us fishing on the Wallawa River and Jerry and I weren't always big on fishing and hunting but it meant that we got to hang out with our dad so we'd go do it and it probably also got us out of our mom's hair and so this one time when we went fishing dad took us in his like giant galaxy 500 and we went up to the Wallawas went up to Wallawa River parked someplace poorly on a, a highway someplace and then the only way to get to the fishing hole was to walk probably 20 some odd feet across a log and so we did that a couple times during the day and what we were doing a lot of the times is my dad would find what they call sucker fish garbage fish things like that that they didn't that weren't supposed to be in the uh, Wallawa River so he and whoever he was with pull those out and we take those fish and we take them up onto the highway because he said we should get rid of them. So instead of doing something like throwing them into the bushes for animals to eat, we went up and we would take them all and line them across the freeway for some reason. Ew. Pretty gross now I'm thinking about it <laughs> and probably dangerous. But one of the times when uh, uh, JC, as I'll call him, uh, and I were going back across the log, one of us slipped, probably me, and took each other off of the log into the fast moving water, which neither of us were great swimmers in rapids and so as we were going along in the water uh, I remember I'd looking up through the water and I'd see my brother's face and I'd grab him and I'd pull him down under the water so I could sit up and breathe <laughs> and we're just kind of like doing this tumbling through the water and then as we're going down trying to survive clutching onto each other then my dad's fishing somewhere down the, the way and we go by in the stream and he drops his stuff and goes running out into the water and grabs us and throws us up onto the bank and in doing so, loses his fishing pole, loses his, I believe, wallet and keys, or maybe not both of those, but enough that whatever happened made him pretty pissed off. But uh, <laughs> anyway, we survived, and, and and that's maybe why we neither, neither of us go hunting and fishing nowadays. <laughs> Going on this vacation to the Oregon coast to Seaside is reminding me of a vacation that Jerry and I took. Um, before we had kids and we went up to Washington State and we went to Snoqualmie Falls and we camped somewhere and then we went up to Vancouver BC and we stayed on the campus at UBC in the dorm room and we went to the museum of some archaeological museum. We went to a museum that had totem poles in it and then we went to Victoria and the British Museum there and then we watched in Vancouver we ate some Chinese food and we watched a Robert Crumb movie, a movie about Robert Crumb and the thing about Jerry, my husband, is that he is pretty much interested in everything so much happy birthday Jerry happy birthday and thank you for always being there to help with whatever needs doing you're an awesome dad I always like getting to bullshit with you and thanks for putting up with my sister we all know that's a big job <laughs> okay I hope you have a great one Remember when MTV used to have their world premiere videos it's going a ways back? Uh, I remember that Jerry and I were together to see NXS's world premiere video of Never Tear Us Apart. And it was something that we were super looking forward to. And then if I remember correctly, which I may not, um, afterwards we just sat in silence. I don't even remember where we were when we saw it, but um, we were just stunned and we loved it. Uh, yeah, happy birthday, Jer. Hey, Jerry, happy birthday. Uh, I just wanted to say that I love you, that you're my best friend that I never get to hang out with, ever. I never talk to. <laughs> I wish we talked more, had more time together, maybe in our retirement. Um, 
just a precious memory for me is the literate writing campaign that we had in college. It was such a dear thing to me. I think it probably saved my life. I think your friendship played a big part of keeping me alive. <laughs> I do. <laughs> um, anyway, I still have all those letters. Someday we'll have to dig them all out and read them again. Love you. Bye. Hey, Jer. Happy 50th birthday. Uh, I'm a day ahead of you, so I'm glad you finally caught up. Your family asked us to send videos uh, with memories uh, that you may or may not remember. And uh, you and I have been friends since high school. I'm not quite sure when we were first friends, but it's been a long time. And there's lots and lots of memories that uh, I could imagine telling. But let me remind you of some things about Weatherford that you may or may not remember. So in this digital age where we have thousands of pictures, I still manage to have uh, photo albums with pictures from our undergraduate years. And I pulled a couple out here for people to see. So probably the most... Uh, uh, um, uh, prominent thing I remember uh, about Weatherford is that you were the person who painted my door on my room. And so for those who haven't seen it yet, here is a picture of my door that I had there in Weatherford. You'll see it has a giant Star Trek logo on the top. And Jer was the mastermind who produced a Spaceman Spiff and Hobbs uh, in Star Trek uniforms there. Uh, for the front of my door. So it was uh, an awesome door to have and it was uh, there on my dorm uh, on First West in Weatherford uh, for a long, long time. So First West, we were a big family. We had a lot of really great friends there uh, who people will remember. And uh, Halloween, as you might imagine, was a great time. So here's a picture of Jer getting ready for Halloween. Okay, so you may or may not remember this, Jer. So that's you there uh, with the giant green frog who is actually Bill Wilson, who uh, lived on First West there. Jer didn't live on First West with us. He lived over on the other side of Weatherford, but he hung out with us. And the reason I'm showing this picture is because that picture is the prelude to something called Haunted Tower. So on Halloween in 1988, we decorated Weatherford up and made it into a haunted house that people could go for. And so the picture, the memory that I want to show you is pictures that I have uh, seen many times and so they stick in my mind. So here is Jer before the Haunted Tower. So he was certainly one of the player actors in the Haunted Tower. Okay, and this is Jer after the Haunted Tower. And so there you see, he had a very uh, vigorous evening, scaring people uh, out of their bejeebas. And uh, I think as with all things, he threw his heart and his strength and his passion into that. And that's certainly one of the great things that we always love and remember about you, Jer. So happy 50th birthday, buddy. I hope to see you soon. And I hope you're having a great day. We'll talk to you soon. The one story that I remember about Eric Jerry was when we were living in the concrete house in the Grand and I had to work the early shift which meant I got up at an ungodly hour and it was still dark so I always came down and gave Tanya and Malia a kiss goodbye and I went into Tanya's room to give her a kiss goodbye and I leaned over it was dark in her room and I realized when I leaned over that it wasn't Tanya right there it was Jerry and I was so surprised, I just said, oh, hi, Jerry, and said goodbye to Tanya. The other story about Jerry that I remember was we were having a some kind of family picnic party in La Grande, and Jerry was interacting with Missy's brother's children, or child, I can't remember which. Anyway, I remember thinking, He's going to be an excellent father, and he is. Hey, Jerry, happy birthday. 50, that's a big one. I remember when you and Peter came down and hoisted the beam up for me. It, you thought it was going to fall on you. Unfortunately, it didn't. And then I remember Tanya telling me that when you proposed, that you said you were only going to propose once. So apparently, that's all you needed. Good luck, Jerry. Okay came over to play with him because they're little kids and liked to go over there. And he's up to his eyeballs and in the water and yeah, was just going to hear and he's picking up the cat. Yep. Carry the cat around. She'd let him. 
get the trailer and carry it around under his arm. Cat didn't care. It's attention. <laughs> greatest people I know. How, you may ask? Well, he has personally changed my life and the life of my family. You see, I had never thought I could ever own a home in my life. But Jer saw our situation and without even asking, crafted a plan, talked with his family and ours, and he made it happen. For that, I am forever grateful. Here's to you, Jerry, on your 50th birthday. And God bless you. Oh, and speaking of old houses, you're always welcome at ours. Don't go now because I'm going I was going to say you love Jerry so much that you're really emotional. Horse gas. Horse gas. Look at those misty eyes. They're just full of love. So, Wait, are you videoing now? No. I don't know. I'm not controlling the video camera. So. <laughs> Now he's like nine months sober from Diet Pepsi, and I'm really it's proud not of that. Sober. Man. Good job. It's not sober from Diet Pepsi. Yes, it is. He's clean. Sober. He's clean. Fine, whatever. Clean. 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 But, uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good place to stop. Okay. Happy birthday, Jer your sister-in-law coming to you live from the parking lot of the Thai restaurant in the Dalles. I'm the weirdo out here shooting a video. Um, the good thing is probably nobody cares. I hope you care that I'm doing this for you. Uh, I don't, what am I supposed to be saying? I don't know. Uh, so, two muffins are sitting in an oven. One muffin says, is it, hot in, is it hot in here or is it just me? And the second muffin says, holy crap, a talking muffin! <laughs> <laughs>